Hi, my name is Natalia Ouellette and I'm an attorney here in the state of Florida, uh, law firm LCO Law, and today I have with me a very, very special guest speaker, renowned professor of tax deeds and tax liens from Property Onion Academy, Phil Kessler. Introduce yourself. Hey, Natalia, thanks for having me. As always, I'm really happy to be here and speaking with you. Awesome. Um, so today, um, I have a couple of questions for Phil because I want to cover a topic that a lot of people don't know about or understand uh, when they're trying to invest in tax liens. And these questions are all going to be regarding state of Florida tax liens. I'm a state of Florida attorney. Uh, there might be a few ways in which Phil might distinguish them from other states, but the focus is Florida here. And so we're going to be talking about over-the-counter tax lien purchases. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, Phil, first of all, could you let us know what exactly is an over-the-counter tax lien purchase? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, every year, counties come out, in Florida, counties come out with a list of tax lien certificates. And, and just to, for brevity, I'm just going to say tax liens from now on. And uh, maybe a county comes out with, Hillsborough County comes out with 50 tax liens, uh, 50,000 tax liens, sorry. <clears throat> um, they'll put them on an auction block and people will bid on them. Uh, they'll bid down the interest rate. So um, in Florida, they offer 18% interest. And uh, in order to win, say if, if there's a $1,000 tax lien and you want to win that $1,000 tax lien, you have to be willing to accept less than 18% interest. And that's what people are bidding on. So if I'm willing to take 10% and you're willing to take 8%, you're going to win that tax lien. Um, so not every tax lien gets sold at this auction. Um, so of the 50,000, maybe 35,000 get sold, but the additional 15,000 are going to go on a list uh, called over the counter, uh, the over the counter list and be sold at the 18% interest rate. Hmm. Is this um, list available online for each specific county or is it like at a statewide portal? It, uh, so it is online. Uh, every county has their own way of doing it. There's a, there's a couple of third party companies that run most of the sales for, for counties. There are a few counties like Lee County that does the sale themselves. Um, and so it, it's a little bit different everywhere, but it, almost always available online. Okay, great. Um, so when are they scheduled in Florida? You said that they, there's a moment in time when tax liens are normally scheduled. When does that generally happen? Yeah, so, um, so in Florida, tax liens are sold within one week, either before or after June 1st. And I, I believe that's the time, I think it's one week. It might be like 10 days within uh, June 1st. And so as a general rule, I just say they're all sold on Ju June 1st, right? When I'm if I'm teaching about it and I'm trying to use an example, I'll just always use June 1st. But um, so yeah, within 10 days or so of June 1st. Um, then the over-the-counter sales, and sorry for uh, that. No, no, that's you're what good. The are. Um, then the over-the-counter sales will come out about a month later after the sale. So right around the beginning of July. Okay, so um, if your kids are out, that's about the time to think about the tax lien sales and then the over-the-counter sales. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what uh, interest rate do investors normally get for non over the counter purchases? Yeah. So that's uh, that's that's an interesting one too. Um, so tax liens are typically bid down to one quarter of one percent. Um, now there's there's strategy behind this, and it kind of goes into like what banks do and why they invest, and you know. But uh, typically, they're bid down to one quarter of 1%, but there is a 5% penalty that is put on every tax lien certificate as long as the, the bid is not 0%. So you have the ability to bid 0% interest, but if you do that, you won't get anything. You're just lending money to the county for free. So the lowest people will typically go is a quarter of a percent, and they'll receive a 5% penalty as a result. And when you say they receive a 5% penalty, you don't mean the investor is going to get penalized 5%, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the home, the homeowner is being penalized. And so if we bought a thousand dollar, if Natalia Phil LLC 
bought a thousand dollar certificate at a quarter percent interest if we got paid back tomorrow or two years from now we would receive uh one thousand fifty dollars okay okay that's great like good to know that that five percent is there as a way to incentivize the homeowner obviously to pay off that lien Correct. Yeah. And there's other penalties that they add on that don't transfer to the tax or the tax lien buyer, right? There's other penalties that they add on to really, um, you know, at, penalize the property owner for not paying their taxes. Um, okay. So there is, you mentioned a period of two years. Can you elaborate a little bit further on what this two year period is making reference to? Yeah, so, uh, so what that is, it's something called the redemption period. Um, and to, to give that like a concrete definition, I guess, you could say the redemption period is a grace period that the county offers a property owner from the time a tax lien is created until the time that the tax lien is foreclosure ready. So um, to elaborate a little bit further, if a tax lien is created on June 1st of 2020 and we purchase it, well, we're in this redemption period, which is sort of like a holding pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So from the time that we purchase it, we, we have to wait two years until June 1st of 2022. And if we're still not paid, then we have the ability to initiate a foreclosure on the property in order to get our money back. Now, in order to initiate that foreclosure on the property, and it's just briefly, um, do they just get to go to the homeowner and say, hey, I'm going to have a sheriff's levy, or is there a different process of doing it? There is, there is a different pro process. So uh, it, you are not allowed to reach out to the, to the homeowner if you own a tax lien on their property. Um, what you do is uh, you file something called a tax deed application with the county, um, with the county clerk. And so the tax deed application, you're just paying the additional outstanding taxes. So you become the single solitary tax lien holder, and you pay a fee to the county for administrative things like uh, mailing costs, uh, things like that. And they're going to force the sale of the property. They'll give an additional 90 days to the property owner saying, hey, you got 90 days, either pay all your taxes and fees, or you're going to lose your property. Um, if the 90 days is gone, then, um, then what happens is they'll force the sale of the property in order to pay the tax lien holder back. They start bidding at everything that the tax lien holder is owed. Okay. All right. So that is the starting minimum bid is the amount that the investor holding that tax lien has put in in order to get a sale. Correct. Yeah. And, and th that number can vary depending on if a property is homesteaded or if it's, um, you know, how many years of outstanding taxes there are, things like that. For homestead properties, the minimum bid value would be what? So 50% of the assessed value of the property, along with all the outstanding taxes, fees, and penalties. Um, it's always, it's fascinating how it works out and how things get to sale. But let's get back to over-the-counter tax lien purchases and investments. So how would an investor tender payment uh, for an over-the-counter tax lien purchase? Um, is there an auction involved in being over-the-counter or how would that work? So the over-the-counter um, process is you literally just have to register with the county. They're going to give you something called a bidder ID or a bidder number. And with that bidder number, you can purchase certificates with a routing and account number. So automated clearinghouse in its first come first serve. So if they have a list of 25,000 and someone goes in there tomorrow and buys 20,000, then there's only 5,000 rest left for the rest of the year. Okay. So how would you pay for that? Um, do you get to wire in the money? Do you get to bring in a big bag of cash? Do you have to do an so ACH? Yes, automated clearinghouse, ACH, so route, routing and account number will, will be how they accept payment. And that's it. That's the only way that they accept payment in the state of Florida, as far as the counties are concerned, to the present Correct. day. Correct. Okay. Correct, yeah. <clears throat> Would you say that investing in over-the-counter tax liens reflects, um, on average, more or less expensive tax liens? 
typically you're going to see less expensive tax liens. Um, and you know, and I don't want to go go off too much on this, but there's uh, uh, when when banks participate in tax sales, um, what they're doing is they're trying to get as much money invested at one time as possible. And so if there's again, 50,000 tax liens out there and maybe the totals uh, $80 million in taxes. Um, and it seems like a lot and it is a lot, but it, it all depends on the county, right? But um, the, if, the, if a bank can get $30 million invested and get 5% on that, that's a significant amount of money, right? Um, but the only way they're going to be able to do that in a reasonable amount of time is by picking the biggest and chunkiest tax liens to do so, right? So, you know, you'll find tax liens for two hundred thousand dollars on, you know, maybe a commercial building or a house in West Palm Beach or something like that, right? So, um, that's uh, they're they're going after the bigger. So, what's left over at the end of that sale are going to be tax liens that range from thirty dollars to maybe you know. $1,500, but that's, you're not going to see them much larger than that. Um, so would you find, for example, that it's more prevalent in vacant land or maybe pieces of land that a homeowner association didn't realize were separately assessed and things like that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So um, the, the majority of what you're going to find over the counter will be vacant land. Um, and it's vacant land isn't necessarily a bad thing when you're looking at over the counter certificates. Uh, one of the biggest factors that people should pay attention to when they're purchasing is individuals tax payment history. So if someone's had a tax lien issued on their property every year for the ta past 10 years and they've paid it off within 200 days of the tax lien sale, well, you can buy year 11 and have a pretty good prediction of what's going to happen, right? And of course, nothing's guaranteed, but um, using someone's tax payment history is a really good, um, you know, barometer of how they're going to act for this tax year. Um, now, for traditional real estate investments, people are recommended to order a title search. It, for tax lien acquisitions, though, um, including over-the-counter tax lien acquisitions, is that a necessity? Is there that kind of a risk involved? Um, yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, no, right? There's no real liability with tax liens um, in as far as the title goes, right? Um, there is a possibility you could end up with the property if the property owner doesn't pay and you file that tax deed application and nobody bids on the property, right? So there's a, there's a list of things that need to happen. And um, if you do end up with the property, you're in a bit of a different situation. But most tax liens, if you're doing your research correctly, you're just lending money for a period of time and you're getting interest on your money, right? So uh, there's no title search required for any of that. It's not, not a necessity. Would you say that uh, investing in tax liens in the state of Florida is a, a good way, a less risky way of commencing investing in real estate in the state of Florida? Yeah, absolutely. Um, tax lien investing is the best way to just sort of dip your toe in the water. And, um, you know, if, you, if you're new to real estate investing or if you're new to any of this, um, tax lien investing is a really good place to start because you can, um, you know, you can watch the whole process from the time the tax lien's created. Um, you know, follow, you know, pick 10 tax liens and follow them over the course of two years. See, one of them will get paid off within a month. The other one may take a full two years. One might actually go to a deed auction and you can watch this whole process unfold start to finish and you can get a really good understanding of everything, uh, how, how they operate in Florida. I do have one follow-up question regarding tax liens and how they work. So we've talked about the two year period. What happens after those two years pass? And let's say the investor doesn't fill out a tax deed application. Are they still going to be receiving interest or accruing interest on that outstanding tax certificate they own? 
Yeah, so they'll continue to earn interest uh, for up to seven years. Um, one of the biggest threats that you'll have as a tax lien investor is something called the certificate life. There's a statute of limitations on tax liens and just taxes and property taxes in general. Um, and it, it's seven years. So if we buy a tax lien, it's issued today, we bought it today, um, then seven years from today, if we're invested and we haven't been paid back and we haven't filed a tax deed application, we will lose our investment. Now you're, like I said, you're accruing interest that whole time. Um, and so there's some strategy there and like when you might wanna file your tax deed application. Um, but, but yeah, so the, the biggest threat you might come across is, is letting your money expire and your investment go. And that's the incentive, of course, of filling out a tax deed application. Now, just because you fill out one of those doesn't mean that you have to bid at the auction, correct? Correct, yeah. Um, the other thing a tax deed application does is it compounds your interest one time. Um, they, so they call it a one-time compounding event where it, let's say we're, and just for round numbers, let's just say we're earning 20% uh, on our money um, for two years and we have a $1,000 tax lien. So we're earning $200 a year in interest. And so after two years, our tax lien's value is $1,400. But if we were to file our tax deed application, we start earning interest on that $1,400 instead of the original thousand. So we're earning $280 a year in interest, plus any other outstanding taxes that we pay, we're earning interest on that money too. Oh, that's good to know. That is another incentivizing reason why you don't just sit on it, you eventually do fill out that tax deed application if no other investor has done so. For that particular property correct yeah and and some there are some investors that will um they will purposefully focus on um tax liens that are foreclosure ready so we have these lists of over-the-counter certificates well we have a list from 2018 2017 to that all the way going back seven years right and so you can buy a tax lien in any one of those years you can buy a 2018 certificate today and file the tax deed application immediately um, and so if you find a certificate, which there are plenty of them, that is a, maybe a rentable, livable, sellable and initiate that foreclosure, that's a, a great strategy. It's about a six month turnaround on your money. And if you initiate that foreclosure and you were actually interested in the property, there is a possibility that you have acquired a quick ready property at a substantial discount from let's say a traditional mortgage foreclosure or homeowners association foreclosure or something of that sort yeah absolutely yeah of course you you just have to be uh <laughs> in the place where you don't get outbid right right yep all right well um is there anything that you would recommend a person who wants to start looking at over-the-counter tax deeds in the state of Florida, like something like they should absolutely do before they tender a penny for a tax lien. Yeah, um, so it, it's good to have someone teach you how to do this first and to take you through the ropes. And so a uh, little anecdote, um, and I know we're probably a little short on time, but one of the very first tax liens I ever purchased was on, um, uh, it was it was on a, a, a piece of land in a graveyard, and there were six uh, uh, six graves that were in that parcel, um, and I didn't know what I was purchasing uh, a tax lien on. I just it was a thirty five dollar tax. This is years and years ago, and um, you know I back you know, uh, eight, nine years ago, there were only like a handful of counties that did this online. Um, and, you know, and, and, I, and we had talked about this recently, but now there's almost like a thousand counties that do this online. But back there were only like 15 to 20 counties. Um, it was it was really new. And so I bought a tax and it was 35 bucks. And I showed the guy who was teaching me and he's like, well, what's it on? And so I looked it up and of course it was on a graveyard and he had some really good quip about how like the, you know, the tenants can't pay. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, but to this day, it's still the fastest I've ever been paid back on a tax lien. I have my money in like two and a half weeks. Um, wow. So sometimes, you know, you never know, but you always want to check, you always want to check the GIS, right? Just take a look at the parcel boundaries. 
uh, check the property appraiser, check the tax collector for how many years of outstanding taxes there are. These are all things that you, you want to look at um, before making a decision on whether or not to invest. And then if an investor wants to get real, true, nitty gritty type of training, they should go to Property Onion Academy and set up training with you, right, Phil? Can you tell us a little bit more about Property Onion Academy? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, so we do one-on-one -on -one trainings and it would be a one-on-one -on -one training with me. Uh, we do them one hour a week where we'll sit down. Um, I'll do a screen share and we'll walk through a specific uh, investing path for, for individuals who sign up. And um, <clears throat> so it's propertyonion.com forward slash academy. And um, yeah, like I said, it's very, very customized depending on what people's investments um, or what they're looking to invest in, right? Some people go into this and they say, well, I want to acquire property. Um, here's my budget. This is what I want to do. And so we can focus on counties that even um, will revolve around someone's budget. If someone has X amount of dollars and, um, and I know that properties in Escambia and, um, you know, say Leon County sell properties at about that price. That's where, that's where we'll focus, right? If someone has a larger budget, we can always go to Miami Dade or Palm Beach County, one of those, uh, more expensive counties, right? And, and everything in between. So, um, so yeah, propertyonion.com forward slash academy and, and we're doing one-on-one -on -one trainings with individuals. So pretty exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Phil, I want to thank you so much. Again, that is Phil Kessler from Property Onion Academy, Professor Tax Deed, Tax Lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, how can people get a hold of you if they want to follow up with questions? Should they go to Property Onion Academy or do you have any email address that you'd like to give out? Yeah, sure. It's uh, phil.kessler, so P-H-I-L dot K-E-S-S-L-E-R at propertyonion.com. And you can shoot me an email there if you have questions. I'm happy to take a moment and answer them. Uh, and yeah, hopefully uh, hear from you soon. Thank you so much, Phil. And I will absolutely have you back because I love picking your brain about all things tax deeds, yeah. tax liens. Um, I always learn something new from you. Anytime we have a conversation, whether it's on webinar, phone, email. So it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so, so much. My pleasure, Natalia. Thanks.